أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين we begin as we always do by first and foremost praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thanking him, acknowledging that he is the only one worthy and deserving of all praise and thanks. And we ask him to shower his most complete and abundant blessings and protection upon his noble prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his noble family, his shining companions, and upon all of those that follow them until the end of time. And we ask Allah to include us from among them. We ask Allah to teach us what will benefit us, to benefit us through what He has taught us, and to increase us in knowledge and accepted actions. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to IOK's 30 in 30 Journey Through Suratul Mulk series. Today we are covering verse number 17. Allah says, A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajim. Am amintum man fis samai an yursila alaikum hasiba, fasata'alamuna kayfa nadir. Again, أَمْ أَمِنْتُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ أَنْ يُرْسِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ حَاصِبًا فَسَتَعْلَمُونَ كَيْفَ نَذِيرٌ Or, do you feel secure that the one in heaven is not going to send a storm of stones upon you? Then you would know just how my warning was. This verse is a continuation from the verse we covered yesterday. The verse we covered yesterday was somewhat of a rhetorical question asked by Allah. Are you positive that Allah is not going to cause the earth to swallow you up? Do you think that the stability of the earth is guaranteed? Now we have another somewhat rhetorical question. Or are you positive that Allah is not going to send down a storm of stones upon you? Again, the purpose behind these two questions is not to get an answer per se, but rather to prove a point. Of course not. Of course none of us can ever be 100% absolutely positive that Allah will never cause the earth to swallow us or that he will never send down a storm of stones. He could easily do both of those things. The ease, comfort, and stability that we have in our lives is no guarantee. In this sense, this verse and the previous verse are very similar and have the same overarching lessons and takeaways. We must be grateful, or we must recognize our blessings in order to be grateful for them. We must be grateful for our blessings in order to keep them. And a failure to show proper gratitude can be a source of punishment and a source of having that blessing taken away. None of us should ever take our blessings for granted with a blameworthy confidence that we will always have what we have. Just as easily as Allah gave us a blessing, Allah can also take that blessing away or replace that blessing with a punishment. This verse has an additional lesson at the end of it for us to learn from. فَسَتَعْلَمُونَ كَيْفَ نَذِيرٌ Then, after going through the punishment, after experience, experiencing the stripping away of one's blessings, then at that point, you will realize and recognize how severe and serious Allah's warnings were. This presents us with a similar lesson that we found in verse number 11. We do not want to be among those who realize the truth when it is already too late. We do not want to be people who realize that we should have been grateful for our blessings after our blessings have been taken away. Allah is telling us, and this is a common theme in the Qur'an. When you see, when you witness, when you experience the punishment, then you will know. Allah tells us that multiple times. Then, once you see it, once you experience it, then you will know with absolute certainty that what Allah warned against is true. But at that point, that knowledge is not going to be of any benefit. That knowledge is useless at that point because there is nothing that one can do about it and use, use it in any way. In this life, having knowledge is of remarkable benefit 
if that knowledge is not simply information, but rather true knowledge that translates into action. In this life, if we truly know the nadir of Allah, His warnings, who He sent as a warner, then we can adequately prepare. We can take heed to Allah's warning in a manner that will actually be of benefit to us by working to protect ourselves from that which Allah is warning against. Like we talked about in verse number 11, the time is now. The time is now to seek knowledge, to go and learn how Allah wants us to live our lives, to discover and understand what the hereafter entails. This life, right now, our current existence before we passed away, before we pass away, is when knowledge has the opportunity to be of benefit to us, to bring some sort of value to us, to provide us with something that is going to help us. After we pass away and leave this world, knowledge is useless. And that is not to insult knowledge in any way, but rather to say that after we pass away, there is nothing we can do with that knowledge. We cannot use that knowledge to change our lives around, to rectify our affairs, to improve our conditions. Knowledge will not bring about any benefit at that point after we leave this world. Allah is telling us in this verse that there are going to be people who only when they see, witness, and experience the punishment, only then are they going to realize the gravity of his warnings. We do not want to be like that. We want to realize the gravity of Allah's warnings now so that we can adequately prepare. Now, when we have the opportunity to take those warnings to heart, and have those warnings motivate us to live our lives in a manner that is pleasing to Allah. Allah uses the word nadir here, which could mean at least a couple of things. Some commentators mention that Allah's usage of the word nadir actually means indhar, a warning, meaning only after witnessing his punishment are people going to realize the gravity of his warning, the warning itself, the message itself. People are going to realize that Allah's warnings were true, Allah's warnings were serious, and Allah's warnings were meant to be taken to heart. Other commentators mention that Allah's usage of the word nadir actually means nadir, a warner, the person who conveys the warning. Meaning only after Allah's punishment are people going to realize the truth of the warner, which is the Prophet wasallam. People are going to realize that the Prophet ﷺ was telling the truth all along. The Prophet ﷺ was being serious. He was sincerely and genuinely warning us of something that we needed to pay attention to. People are going to realize, man, I should have listened to the Prophet ﷺ. I should have believed in him. I should have acted upon his teachings and lived by his example people are going to regret not having taken the Prophet ﷺ as their guide. So again, take advantage of the time that you have now. Take the time to learn. Learn about what Allah has warned us about. Learn about what the Prophet ﷺ has brought to us as warnings. Then, take the time to implement that knowledge into practical action. Take the warnings to heart. Allow the warnings to influence how you carry yourself and live your life. This is how we protect ourselves from realizing and furthermore acting upon the truth when it is too late. This is how we protect ourselves from having regret in the hereafter. I should have. May Allah help us to utilize our time wisely to learn about how He wants us to live our lives, and may He protect us from realizing the truth and further acting upon the truth when it is too late. Ameen. So again, our verse for today is, أَمْ أَمِنْتُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ أَنْ يُرْسِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ حَاصِبًا فَسَتَعْلَمُونَ كَيْفَ نَذِيرٌ Or, do you feel secure? that the one in heaven is not going to send down a storm of stones upon you, then you would know 
just how my warning was. وَصَلِ اللَّهُمَّ عَلَىٰ خِيرِ خِلْقِكَ مُحَمَّدِ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ